Sage Mass 90 and Mass 200 make it easy to pay vendors electronically. And by doing so, you'll eliminate paper and postage, improve cash management, and lessen the risk of lost or stolen checks. In this tutorial, we'll walk through the processing of an electronic payment and generation of the ACH file for upload to your bank. Note that in other tutorials, we've covered the prerequisite setup and configuration of electronic payments and sending of pre-notes. We're going to break our demonstration into four steps. In the first, we'll review the example vendor's record to verify that they're properly set up for electronic payments. Next, we'll process the vendor payment, then we'll generate the ACH file, and finally, we'll discuss the process of uploading the ACH file to your bank. So beginning with step one, let's review our example vendor's setup by going to our menu tree and selecting Accounts Payable, Main, Vendor Inquiry. Using the lookup, let's select All Climate Maintenance as our vendor. And we can see that electronic payment has been enabled for them. Next, we'll take a look at their setup by hitting the More button and selecting Electronic Payment. Here we can see that their bank information has been entered and that Prenote is shown to be approved. A Prenote is a file that is sent as a test transmission by your bank to your vendor's bank to ensure the account is correctly set up for electronic payments. Everything appears to be correct here, so we'll close the window. We also want to open Paperless Office to make sure that this vendor is set up for delivery of the AP Check Advice by email. We'll change the document to AP Check, and here you can see that email has been enabled as the PDF delivery option. Moving to the Email tab, we can verify the email address of the person that will receive the remittance advice. Now let's close this window and move to the Invoices tab. In our example, we'll be paying the three open invoices that you see here. Let's close the window. So now that we've verified that our vendor is correctly configured for electronic payments, let's now move on to the second step in our tutorial, which is the processing of the vendor payments. We'll start the payment process by going to our menu tree and under Accounts Payable, we'll select Check Printing and Electronic Payments, then Invoice Payment Selection. We'll keep the default selections to pay our invoices, select by invoice due date only, invoice and discount due dates of 10-19-2011, and always take discounts disabled. You'll need to adjust these settings based on your company's specific needs. Include Electronic Payment Vendors has three options. No will exclude electronic payment vendors, only will select only electronic payment vendors, and yes will select all vendors that are paid by either check or electronically. We'll select only. The next option, pay electronic payment vendors by check, is available if you want to pay your vendors by check instead of by electronic payment. We'll be paying our vendors electronically and therefore we'll leave this disabled. We'll leave all other selections set to All. Let's now click the Select button, and here we can see all of the invoices available for payment that fall within our selection criteria. Notice that it includes the three belonging to our example vendor, All Climate Maintenance. To select all invoices for payment, we'll click the green check, and then click OK to process the selection. Next, we'll click the printer icon to print the invoice payment selection register, and for demo purposes, we'll preview it on our screen. Here you can review the payment listing, and now we'll close the report. And let's click Yes to print checks and or remittance advices. The Select Payment Type window opens. Since we're not paying vendors with checks in this tutorial, we'll select Electronic Payments and click OK. This will bypass the check printing window and the electronic payment remittance advice printing window opens. The bank code is automatically set to our default bank, Security Pacific Checking, and we'll use our standard form code for printing. The effective date defaults to the current day and we'll set it to the following day. Your bank will specify the number of days needed before the transmission to the vendor becomes effective. 
Typically, payments are transmitted overnight, but some banks require two days lead time. Moving to paperless office output, we'll select print slash PDF or electronically deliver. This option evaluates the vendor's paperless configuration to determine if the remittance advice will be printed, saved as a PDF file, and or emailed. We'll leave the other options set to their defaults. Now let's print the electronic payment remittance advices and the system generates a PDF file for each advice. Here we're prompted to remove the stubs from our printer and replace them with paper. Before dismissing the message, let's review the PDF remittance advices that were created. To do this, we'll go to the menu tree and open Paperless Office, Main, Vendor Viewer. We'll leave the form type as check and put a date range of the current date through the following day and click Refresh. And here we have a list of remittance advices created for the electronic payments. Let's take a look at one by double clicking. Notice that it includes all invoices paid, similar to a check stub. Now let's close the advice and the vendor viewer. Now we'll click OK on the prompt to remove stubs from our printer and continue with the process. And we'll say yes to printing the check and electronic payment registers. The check and electronic payment register window displays the current general ledger period and ending date. The current accounts payable posting date defaults to the system date, and the electronic payment comment defaults to the current date prefixed with the letters PY. This may need to be changed to the effective date since it's part of the ACH file that is transmitted to the bank. Your bank will specify the date needed in this field. Let's now preview the register. Note that the check numbers begin with E for electronic payment. Let's now close the report and yes to print the register. You should review the register and now we'll close it and click yes to update it. If you've configured paperless office electronic delivery for the vendor remittance advices, the advices will be emailed during the update. Once complete, we're prompted to print the daily transaction register and we'll click yes and we'll hit preview and after a quick scan, we'll close the register and click yes to update it. And that completes the processing of the vendor payments. Now we're ready to move on to step three in our tutorial, which is generation of the ACH file. To generate the file, we'll return to the menu tree and choose generate ACH file. The system defaults the bank code that has been set up to use for ACH payments. You should verify that this is the correct bank code. The file code to use defaults to the current date. This four digit code is used in the file name for identification purposes and may be changed if necessary. Batches to include in transmission has three options. We'll select only batches never transmitted. For demonstration purposes, we'll use our Microsoft XPS document writer so that we can preview the file on our screen. Now we'll click proceed to generate the file. The file that is being created will be stored in the location specified in the Accounts Payable Setup options. However, if no location is specified, the file will be located in the AP Company Code folder. The listing shows information that is contained in the file created for the bank. Importantly, you should review the file name, batch description, amount, and number of entries to verify that it is correct before sending the file to the bank. And that completes step three, generation of the ACH file. Now let's move on to step four, where we'll discuss the process of uploading the file to your bank. Uploading the file is typically done through your bank's website. Because each bank has its own interface and instructions for uploading files, we won't demonstrate the actual process. Typically, when you're on your bank's website, you'll be prompted to browse for the file on your local workstation. To simulate this, we've opened a Windows Explorer window to browse for the file on our local computer. We've configured our system to save the ACH files under our paperless subdirectory. The file name is automatically generated beginning with the bank code, followed by the four-digit file code used when generating the file, 
followed by a three-digit sequence code. In our example, we used bank code A and 1019 as our file code, and the sequence starts with 000. If subsequent ACH files are generated for the same bank and file codes, the sequence code will increment to 001 and so on. And that completes our demonstration of the processing of an electronic payment and generation of the ACH file for upload to your bank. Give us a call if you need assistance with this or any other feature in your Sage Mass 90 or Mass 200 system. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Bye for now.